Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the In Step with God podcast. I'm your host, JT Martin, and today we're jumping back into Fault Lines for episode 10. This has been an incredible journey, and I've learned a lot. Um, I, I mean, I've definitely grown not only as a podcaster, but just as a reader and as a thinker. Um, walking through this very detail-oriented kind of reading of fault lines. Um, so today, we are jumping in to chapter 8, which is titled, The Damage. So, let's begin. So, in chapter 8, um, I didn't really have a whole lot of academic notes. Um, he, there is a section on page 153 that was very, very well written, um, well put together. Um, what, what I appreciate so something that Vodi is doing that he he kind of does more of as he goes through the book is that he balances his citations. And what I mean by balancing his citations is that he is citing people who are pro-CRT and anti-CRT and showing where the understandings of what CRT is line up. So he's give, in in certain sections of fault lines, he's actually giving more than scholastic um, assent or scholastic agreement. He's actually giving a couple of objective markers. So pay attention. Whenever Vodi is citing both somebody who is anti-CRT and pro-CRT, and they're agreeing on some element of what CRT is or talks about, that is a super important passage to pay attention to for your understanding of what CRT is and how it works. And so that's something that he's doing more of in the later sections of the book. Something that I, that I appreciate um, is he is in the damage, he gets into the politicization of American culture. Um, and he also talks about the struggle of logic and how, and how in certain regards, the um, critical social justice movement is dependent upon a kind of reasoning that is circular and question begging. Um, and so this is, this is super critical. Um, and so he also gets into a couple of instances where there are instances where professionals are berated for not being in agreement with CRT. Um, he lists, he lists Kurt Beathard. Uh, Bruce Gilley or Guiley. Um, and, and so, in essence, what he what he's doing in this section, and again, so something I do want to point out is in this section, he gets back into the clearer usage and distinction between CRT and CSJ. Um, it, it, it's hit or miss. Sometimes he's super clear about it. Sometimes he's not. Um, and so, one thing... So this is this is something that I want to that I want to get into. Um, what he starts talking about is one of the byproducts. So one of the byproducts that he talks about is preachers who spend more time trying to be helpful than they do trying to be truthful are doing a disservice to those whom they preach. What he means by this, what Vodi is getting into here is when any when we start balancing ourselves and truth is minimized we're actually not being whatever we're trying to be um the way the way that i tend to put this is that 
wherever we are not being as truthful as we could be, we are in effect preventing ourselves from being as Christ-like as we could be. So if the mission of the church and if the and if the command for the Christian is to be as Christ-like as they can be under the power of the Holy Spirit in every moment and in every interaction, then our shifting away from being truthful for whatever reason is actually preventing us from being like Christ in that regard and in those spaces. So one thing that I do appreciate is that he gets into this distinction between um, that there are issues that conservative people who are supporting the critical social justice perspective a lot of what Vodi is being very charitable. He's saying that there's a good chance that they may not be as well studied in that stuff. And so it sounds right. It sounds like it's trying to do the right things, but they're not familiar enough with the academic background to recognize the issues that are happening. Um, he gets, he, he then goes kind of into the importance of fathers. Um, again, I'm not, and he, and he cites a couple of good sources. Um, again, really, really good. Um, this whole section of the damage is just very, very well put together. He talks about it. He, he's just unpacking so much. I can't really get into the massiveness of of what he does in this section um I, I think i'm going to focus in and kind of and kind of give an overview i mean people are people are familiar with the fatherhood problem in american culture and all these kinds of things um and one of the things that he gets into is um there is this again he's just hammering this point home that this critical social justice movement is advocating for positions that are inconsistent with the data um what i so one thing so on page 169, which I think is, it, it's getting close to the end of the section, um, there is a massive footnote and he, and he really unpacks a whole bunch of information. And so this was super good. This was, uh, let, me, let me state this as clearly as I can. Vody needed more of these. So the, this is kind of where I'm putting fault lines in terms of what it is and how it should be used as I've continued to read through the book. Fault lines is a good introduction to the current situation. It is not the end of the conversation. It is the beginning of the conversation. And something that I wish Vody would do more of Um and and this is and I'm I haven't I've seen that there's a fault lines workbook. Um I do not have it yet. Um, but I'm hoping that he really gets into and digs into a lot of this stuff more fully in the workbook. I think that would be a fantastic um reality if it if it's if it is that way. Um something that he gets into is abortion. So he talks about crime, he talks about statistics, he talks about fatherhood, he talks about accountability, he and then he gets into abortion. Um, he talks about um, Kermit Gosnell. Um, if you don't know who that is, Google him. Um, and then something that is that I wish more people would talk about is the genocide uh, uh, of African Americans through abortion. Um, and that's something that Vodi touches on. And I was really happy to kind of see that. Um, 
So this is a shorter one. Um, and it's because there, there, there wasn't an extensive amount to dig into. Um, and, and what I mean by that is that the further we go through the book, the shorter some of the videos might be. And here's why. I'm not going to kick a dead horse. If I have mentioned certain issues multiple times already, I'm not going to bring it back up. Um, part of what, part of what this is, it, it, this is, this is not just informational videos. It's to help you learn how to pay attention to what you're reading and how it's put together. Um, I think that's something. I, I, I've realized this more fully o over the past week or so. Um, but Fault Lines is just, it, it's very well put together the further you get into it. And so as I've gone further and further into it, I found less and less spaces where I feel I need to make comment, if that makes any sense. Um... I think something to keep in mind. So, and this is more at what I call the meta level. It's not dealing with the immediate aspects, but it's kind of at, at a broader focus. Something to keep in mind if you're reading Fault Lines is that he's specifically looking at social justice in the evangelical movement. And so when, you, when we're looking at the damage section, um, he branches outside of that initial scope, but he doesn't, he doesn't get rid of the scope. Um, and so part of that is going to play out in make sure that as you're reading fault lines, you're thinking about what the implications of critical social justice, critical race theory, and all of this stuff look like in different societal contexts. So what does critical social justice look like in the justice system? What does it look like in the educational system? What does it look like in the economic systems? Right now, what we're looking at in fault lines is just what critical social justice looks like in evangelical systems and evangelical perspectives. The, I cannot say it more clearly. Fault Lines is not a book about your insert whatever non-Christian religion person who agrees with critical social justice. This book is not about them. Do not take this book as describing them because it is not. This is something that I've wrestled with as I've continued to read fault lines. It is very, very difficult to read fault lines and maintain an appropriate application of the information. What And so that's the kind of stuff that I want you guys to be thinking about is not only what are you reading, how you're reading, are you noticing where you need to do more information? That I'm hoping that you guys can kind of start to get a sense of whether or not something needs a little bit more evidence to really make the point and whether or not you need to do your own research to find that evidence. Um, anyways, chapter nine, all in all, extremely well put together. The damage, the damage as a chapter is just, uh, sorry, chapter eight. Um, I said the wrong chapter number. Um, the damage is just very well put together. Um, I, I don't have a whole lot of remarks other than, again, to just make sure we're keeping the right perspective as we're reading this book. Um, Something that I that I think I would encourage everyone to do is that if you're reading fault lines, be reading it 
be reading it while reading Proverbs. And I'm not going to get into the ins and outs of why I think that's a good idea. Um, because quite frankly, I'm trying to keep this a shorter video um, for you guys. So I, I think it would be very good to be reading some sort of wisdom literature in, in, in the Bible as we're reading through fault lines because it's going, because I think it will help keep us grounded. Um, with that being said, this has been episode 10 of fault lines. This is the in step with God podcast, and I'm your host, JT Martin. God bless. And we'll see you next time.